Okay, we're getting into the topic um, where we're going to focus on uh, homeostasis, and that's the maintaining internal stable conditions. So um, even inside of cells, we need to maintain homeostasis. So keep the conditions inside the cells, uh, and in general, the living thing uh, constant. And a lot of that is accomplished through what's called transport. Transport uh, refers to um, how substances enter and how substances leave the cell. Uh, we want to bring in nutrients and things that we need into cells and uh, remove waste and toxic substances out of the cell, and all in an effort to maintain homeostasis. All right, so this, uh, for the first topic, we're just going to spend uh, this video on, um, spend time in this video looking at what this cell membrane looks like. Okay, so if we were to zoom in uh, into the cell membrane and take a closer look, um, we'll find that it looks, it has uh, two layers of phospholipids, right? and it, that's also known as the phospholipid bilayer. Right, so there's two layers, and it just wraps all the way around the cell, if you can imagine. All right, so we're just drawing a cross section here. All right, inside the uh, between the phospholipids, we're, they're gonna there's gonna be some other structures that we'll label in a minute. Um, but let's just draw a few more phospholipids. There's a structure like that. So, um, and the, this this plasma membrane is fluid uh, is fluid, which means it can just shift around each other. Um, I'm going to add uh, some of these. Uh, there's a four ring structure embedded in here. Maybe one in there, and then we have another structure. Let's say. These are ring-like structures, way more than four though, like hundreds. They can kind of branch out too. All right, so uh, this is um, just maybe the most important uh, components of the cell membrane. All right, so let me back up and label uh, this phospholipid bilayer. All right, so this here, let's label um, right, phospholipid bilayer, uh, and each of them is each of these individual um, phospholipid has. It's important to understand that this is uh, the polar side; the head is. So that's the side that attracts water, and this is the nonpolar tail, which is the side that repels water, which is why they're facing uh, toward each other and away from all the water that's in the cell and outside the cell. All right, so they're facing toward each other to get away from the water. All right, so that, that's the nonpolar tail, and that's the polar head. And there's a phosphorus in there, which make, make it the uh, phosphate head. All right, so um, in this phospholipid... Uh, this is the let's see, let's see. This is the part right here, the tails, that is a barrier. That acts as a the barrier between the inside of the cell and outside of the cell. And again, it's because the tails are nonpolar. Um, all right, so let's label the rest of this. These these um, blue objects are known as proteins. So proteins can um, have, they have a lot of jobs. Uh, the ones that go straight across through the membrane are known as uh, transport proteins. Uh, they do what the name implies. They transport things in and out of the cell. Okay, and then uh, there's other proteins that are embedded um, partially or sometimes also through, but uh, they're involved in uh, uh, receiving signals, so we call them receptor proteins. All 
All right, so they receive uh, signals. And then we have these uh, four ring structures. Um, got one there, got another one here, and you got another one there. Um, I'm going to try to not clutter this up too much. Um, that's cholesterol. Right. And cholesterol is a four ring lipid. Uh, lipids generally don't have rings, but cholesterol does. And, and um, this cholesterol helps stabilize the cell membrane. So that's, an, that's the key word. So, um, for example, when, when temperatures get cold, uh, the, the phospholipid tends to contract, right? So to allow, to allow that fluidity, that, uh, the flexibility, you can say, um, the, the cholesterol allows that to happen in cold temperatures. And when, when the temperatures get higher, warmer and hotter, uh, the cell membrane tends to kind of fall apart. But it's again the cholesterol that's able to stabilize it, kind of hold it together. So, in different conditions, the cholesterol is very important in the stability of the cell membrane. All right, stabilize. All right, we have one more to go here. These are the uh, these long chains. These are carbohydrates. Carbohydrate chains. Okay, and their purpose now. Um, their purpose is to provide energy, a uh, source of energy inside the cells when they're when they're in, in the form of glucose and starch and things like that. But when they're connected to the cell membrane like this, their job is completely different. So their job is to identify the cell. So you'll have like these uh, immune system cells like these uh, that just travel around the body, um, kind of checking the IDs of these cells, making sure they belong um, to you or not or the the organism or not, and if the if the ID if the carbohydrates don't match, then that cell is going to get attacked, or that tissue or that organ can be attacked, which is why it's important. Uh, for example, uh, for individuals that get organ transplants, that their carbohydrates match, their blood type matches, and there has to be all kinds of um, matches uh, that are checked before before an organism can uh, accept. Um, an organ from another individual. All right, so there's your um, there's your video on the cell membrane, the plasma membrane. You should uh, get some paper, start from scratch, and see how much of this you can recall um, the structures and the functions of each of these components.